Hey guys, uh, so I want to make this video about the dot product. Now I've actually written about the dot product, the current wiki page as it currently stands anyway, was actually written by me, uh, so it might have changed by the time you're watching this, because I don't know who's going to touch it in the future, uh, but that information is definitely available to you, and I realize that throughout my videos I do talk about the dot and the cross product quite a lot. Um, and as I said, the information is available, but not necessarily everyone learns best from written material. So I figured I might as well take the time to do a video specifically on the DAW product, and then at a later date, uh, not sure when, but I'll probably do one on the cross product as well. However, I think the DAW product is definitely more important, personally, uh, than the cross product because it can be used for more things. The cross product, as we'll see when we get to that video, is a very specific uh, type of of mathematical function that gives us a very specific result, whereas the dot product actually opens up a gate to calculate a few different things. So let's get into the dot product. Um, by the way, I am going to assume at the very least that you have a pretty good understanding of vectors, like basic vector math, like how, how tail to tip works, adding that, how everything's always relative to the origin point, that type of thing, multiplication, what its scalar is, what a vector is, unit vectors, that type of thing. I am gonna assume you know that. If you do not, you can actually once again, I am going to recommend that you have to read something on this, but I do cover pretty much everything you need to know in this video in the actual wiki article that I wrote. So whether that page is still up or not when you're watching this, um, I don't know, but basic vector math information is easily available on the web. So do look that up if you're not super familiar with vectors. Um, okay, so the dot product. What do I want to get in uh, with this? What do I want to talk about the dot product? Uh, the first thing I want to talk about the dot product is that when I give you the definition, uh, it's not going to make sense. So I'm going to give you the definition right now. It is the projection of a vector a onto vector b uh, multiplied by the magnitude of vector b okay and as i said this is not going to make a lot of sense to you so that looks like a really weird arrow uh, this is not going to make a lot of sense to you because you're going, what the heck is a projection okay i know what the magnitude is but like what you know what does this value even represent how am i going to use this in my games uh, well, that's hopefully what you're going to get a better understanding of, because if you understand how the dot product uh, not necessarily is derived, uh, because I'm not going to necessarily do uh, proofs in this one, just because I want to keep the video as short as I can, because I usually make long videos, and this is probably going to be no exception to that. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to spend too much time just talking about proofs, especially when I've already written about it. So, uh, if you are interested in that, look at the wiki page once again. Um, but that being said, let's move on here. So this isn't going to make much sense to you uh, at the beginning here, but as we kind of get further in and understand uh, the different ways to calculate the dot product, we'll understand why this is a useful value and the different things that we can take from it. Uh, so what? let's start with the projection. What is the projection? So projection. And this is a part that I think uh, always messes with people, the projection, because there's actually two projections. And we're going to talk about uh, the second one later. So we're going to focus on calculating the dot product uh, for A onto B, because that's the definition I gave you. But I'm going to give you a bit of a spoiler. The dot product also works with B onto A. So we're, we're going to start, though, with A onto B. So we'll say this is vector A. And we will say this guy is vector B. And I'll write these out as well. So this is vector B, and this guy is vector A. Oops, it's vector A. Uh, so the best way, or the two common ways, I think actually is probably a better way to put it, of describing the dot product is, uh, I think, uh, let's start with one way. We're going to start with the flashlight way. It's, it's usually described as the shadow that A creates on B. And what, what they mean by that is if I hold a flashlight, so if I take a perpendicular value, so perpendicular line to B, right? If I hold a flashlight flashing its light perpendicular to B, right? So I draw my flashlight up here. I'm not a very good drawer, but this is my flashlight. It's 
flashing its light all the way down in this direction, it's going to create a shadow on A that is perfectly this length, this length down here. And this length across is the projection. Right? This shadow is the projection. So that's that's a common way to put it. So the, the key thing that you have to understand here is that when we take a perpendicular essentially line that touches the tip of A but crosses, uh, if you imagine B extending forever, it's going to eventually cross B. And we'll understand why I don't say crosses B specifically because when we do our example of B onto A, that's going to make a bit more sense. Uh, but it's basically this value that's created by the right triangle that's created when you basically add in an invisible uh, line that touches the tip of A and uh, is perpendicular to B. Uh, so the way that we can actually calculate this is let's say we have the angle here. We, can cal we could calculate this projection. Now we know this length here is the magnitude of A, right? So we can use our Sakatoa Toa to easily solve for that, right? So we have the angle, we have the hypotenuse, and what we want is the adjacent across here, right? So that's going to be cosine. So we know that cosine theta is equal to the magnitude of A, uh, or sorry, not the magnitude of A, my mistake, the projection over, over, sorry, the magnitude of A. Right, because A is just the hypotenuse. And we can rearrange that so we can solve then for projection uh, is equal then to the magnitude of A times the cosine of theta. And if we go back all the way up to here, no, not, I went all the way up, yeah, one, one stroke of my pen, all the way up, uh, we see that it's the projection of A onto B, which is what we have down here, uh, multiplied by the magnitude of vector B. So to calculate our dot product, then we know dot is equal to projection times the magnitude of B, right? And uh, we can fill this in, right? So dot then becomes the projection, the magnitude of A, times cosine theta times magnitude of B. You might be going, okay, well, okay, great. We calculated the dot product. I still don't know what it does, but even if I did, uh, big problem, I don't have theta, and that's not going to make the dot product very useful because what, like, can you think of any examples? I probably can't even think of one where I have the angle between two vectors uh, in common game stuff. Uh, so like this is you know essentially useless and we're going to see later that there's actually another way to calculate the dot product that we can do with just the vectors alone so that's pretty pretty awesome uh, but we're not going to cover that yet what I actually first want to cover is I mentioned that uh, that I mentioned at the top here it's a on to b and in that order but it also has this um, commutative property of being able to work backwards. So B onto A works the exact same as A onto B. So B onto A multiplied by the magnitude of vector A works the same as A onto B multiplied by the vector B. And it gives us the same answer. And I'm going to show you uh, using the exact same example that I just showed, but we're going to work through it again. So let's go ahead and draw this out. So we have our vector A up here and we have our vector B uh, so it's a bit shorter, but we're not dealing with specific numbers. So just imagine that's the same picture than that what I had above. So this is B, and this is A, right? So because we're doing B onto A, we're doing the dot product of B onto A here now, uh, we need the line that's perpendicular to A, and let's change up my color again. Now we need the line that's perpendicular to A, right? So that's something like that. So, and it needs to touch the tip of B, so it's going to be about here, right? Touches the tip of B and is perpendicular to A. So if I extended A, we can then see we have a right triangle here. So uh, we then want to solve for this length, right? Because this is the projection. Projection. 
And we can do that once again using uh, cosine. So that becomes cosine, if we have the, the angle again, sorry. Uh, cosine theta is equal to the projection. This here now is the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of vector b, so projection over the magnitude of b. Right, and then we rearrange so it becomes projection is equal to uh, the magnitude of v multiplied by cosine theta, like so. And uh, we can once again plug that in, right? So if we're doing b onto a multiplied by the magnitude of a, it becomes dot is equal to the projection times magnitude of a, right, so we fill that in, projection is b times cosine theta times magnitude of a, magnitude of a, and as you'll probably notice, if you remember, this is the same value here, right, these are the same thing, so whether we do b onto a or a onto b, we get the same value, what matters is if we're dealing with this or with this, because the projection value in these two different equations are not the same. There are two projections, right? There's a projection that we can get up here, and there's a projection we can get down here. So if we are trying to solve for the equation, if we have dot, right, and we have both vector b, the magnitude of vector b and the magnitude of vector a, uh, and we want to solve for projection, we can get either two of those, you know, we can get either one, we can get projection, projection, so if we want A onto B, A onto B is uh, this guy up here, if we get that one, then what we're doing is we're taking the dot and we're dividing it by the magnitude of B, right, because that's what we're doing here, right, if we want to solve for projection, then you take this, divide both sides by the magnitude of b, and it becomes dot divided by uh, the magnitude of v. And if we wanted projection b onto a, then we're taking the dot and we're dividing it by the magnitude of a. Right? Because we're taking this here, we're dividing both sides by the magnitude of a, uh, and that becomes dot divided by the magnitude of a is equal to projection. So two separate projections that you can get from, from the dot product. And so now that we understand the projection thing, which is important because I talk about it in other videos, um, we're now going to talk about another way to calculate the dot product. So I mentioned before that the angle here is kind of a limiter because we might not necessarily always have the angle and that's kind of a pain. So uh, another way that we can calculate the dot product, and I'm not gonna explain because this would be a proof thing and I said that I'm not gonna do proofs in this video, but another way that we can do the dot product is the component method. Component method. And let's say we have two vectors. So we have x1, y1, and z1. And we have x2, y2, and z2. Right? The component method of taking these two things is, is very simil similar, we, or simple. We take the dot, here, and we take x1, we take the like components and we multiply them, so that becomes x1 times x sub 2 plus y1 times y sub 2 plus z1 times z2, right? And that gives us the same value, believe it or not, as this cosine thing up here. And so that's, that's actually really useful because if we can do this with just the vectors alone, because we, you know, we have the magnitude from both of these, we can easily get the magnitude from both of these. Magnitude, right? Uh, and we have the uh, components because that's just part of having the vectors, right? We, we know that our other definition, right, is dot is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of theta or dot is equal to projection uh, a onto b times 
projection, or sorry, not projection time, is the magnitude of V, or <laughs> dot is equal to projection uh, B onto A times magnitude of A, right? And so this is, these are three separate equations that all have things that we normally wouldn't be able to solve for vectors, uh, but we have we always have the magnitude, and because we can calculate the dot product up here, then we've now made it possible that we can solve for cosine theta, or we can solve for projection of A onto B, or projection B onto A, just by simply rearranging one of these three formulas, because we have dot here, and we have dot here, and we have dot here, and we have the magnitudes, and et cetera. So the, this dot product opens up a whole bunch of different things for us. Uh, what's important to note about the dot product uh, is, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier actually, is that these projection values are scalars. Projections are scalars. So I'll write that actually. Projections are scalars. And this is really important because a scalar value uh, is well, obviously not a vector, but if you want to think of it, it's like a length. So if I have two vectors, if I have one like this and I have one like this, uh, so one going up like this and one going like this, then my projection, and we'll call this A, and we'll call this B, my projection of B onto A, or A onto B is going to be like down here. And this is going to essentially give me a negative length. Negative length, and I, sh I shouldn't do that because that looks like a dash mark. Neg length essentially um, and the reason that that's important that we get these these this distinction of negative and positive and scalars and what have you is because with this scalar we've actually got quite a, a powerful thing because if I wanted to get a vector representation here I wanted to call this let's say C I could easily do so I get the projection which is this negative length here right so I take the projection and I multiply it by the unit vector of B, well, it's going to give me C. Because it's going to give me uh, this negative value, which is going the opposite direction of B. Uh, it's got that proper length. And it's going to give me this direction of C, this vector of C. So you can also kind of calculate these projection uh, vectors as well, which are pretty useful. Um, now, as I said, another thing that's projection thing, I mentioned this, you can calculate for cosine theta. That's a pretty useful one um, as well. I've definitely used that before. So you could have uh, theta is equal to arc cosine of uh, the dot product between these two of vector, the magnitude of vector A times the magnitude of vector B. And if these two things are you know, both unit vectors, right? That's just one times one, so dot divided by one. Uh, so you, if, if you're using unit vectors, you can even simplify this even further and just say theta is equal to the arc cosine of the dot product. Uh, so that's pretty much all I need to cover. The last thing I'll mention is uh, that when we write this, I've been writing it as dot so far, but when we take two vectors, so say we have vector A and we have vector B, when we write the dot product, we literally do it with a dot. <laughs> so a dot B is equal to dot. That's just the real notation for it. So uh, if you see that, I don't think you'd see it necessarily in like studio because you don't use this notation. You use the dot method. Uh, or if you're doing it in vector two, you use like a function, right? Uh, a function that would just take the X and Y components and do take it basically do this, but without the Z, that'd be a 2D dot product. Um, but you use the dot pro or dot method if you're doing vector three, right? Um, so that's pretty much all I need to cover. I don't think I'm actually going to even hop into studio on this one because the dot product is just so broad. It's hard to give a specific use for it, but hopefully this gave you a rundown of it. If you do want to see an example, do read the wiki page. Cause I actually gave one on reflecting vectors, uh, which is a very broad one or sorry, not broad. It's a very specific use of the dot product. Uh, because as I said, this is like a math tool, anything like addition or subtraction or multiplication, you can use it for many things. Um, so do check that out, though, if you are interested, and hopefully you learned something new today. Thanks for watching. Bye.